In this video, I'm doing an end room tour and will be featuring all my end colonies of various species, size, and age. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Enjoy the video! Hey guys, I'm Morgan and welcome to End Room Tour 2020. First of all, I would like to take this moment to quickly thank my subscribers who have supported me throughout this YouTube journey. This video will be featuring all my end colonies, making this perfect for you regardless if you see my older videos or not. But anyways, here are the timestamps and let's get started with the video. Starting off with my oldest colony, we have my open concept Campanotus oriventris colony. This colony has only one queen who was caught over 3 years ago. They grew from simple and cheap homemade setups to this open concept setup which is a 70 by 70 cm tray covered with white pebbles. It has several different types of formic harems such as ones I bought from Taobao, Just Ends, and even Ends Canada. It is decorated with rocks, some decorative toys, and a mini acrylic table to give it more depth. Currently due to their size and my limited space, I'm giving them a diet which is only enough to maintain their current numbers. But I may or may not expand their setup in the future to increase their size. A very common question people ask me is why do these ants not just crawl out of their setup? And why this random gap over here? Basically, in ant keeping, we use something called an ant barrier to prevent ants from escaping their setups. There are different ways to do this, like keeping ants in an enclosed setup, applying a layer of a substance that ants can climb on, and using substances that kill the ants upon escape. This setup was originally built with the intention to follow other ant keepers who has a similar type of setup and add oil into this gap. However, I found that it was high maintenance to clean, expensive, and quite cruel in my opinion. Also, my house is built on a slope, which means that the oil ended up being unbalanced. Currently, I'm using dry bay powder as a barrier. This prevents the ants from climbing out of the setup because it is too slippery for them to climb on. Traditionally, the baby powder is mixed with a liquid such as water or alcohol to help the baby powder stick to the walls better and allow the barrier to last a longer period of time before needing to be reapplied. The downside is that it looks rather unsightly over time. But thankfully for me, the design of the open concept setup means that the outwall section is less humid compared to the outwalls of other end colonies, allowing a dry barrier to work effectively giving me a strong balance of functionality and aesthetics. Moving on from the Oriventris colony's private table, we have the end shelf, or perhaps the pet shelf now. Recently, my dad got into the fish keeping hobby, and he's using the former end shelf as a place to display the fish. But to be fair, I have fewer large colonies this year compared to last year. Most of my colonies either died due to mistakes such as raids from our end colonies, proper setups, and old age, all were given to my friends such as the guys that came to help out in my previous video. Speaking about those guys, the next colony that I have was actually given to me by one of them. They are the Erido Mimax colony that was given to me by Tikia. In my previous video, I titled and identified them as Erido Mimax Pignelli. This is widely accepted by the local end keepers as the correct identification. A multiple experience and keepers from all around the world claim that Iridomai Mespignelli does not exist in Singapore and this was a misidentification. I have strong reasons to believe them as they provide multiple scientific and pictorial sources. Therefore, I'll keep the identification of this species at just the genus level for now. I'll definitely make a video regarding this identification problem sometime in the future. But putting naming issues aside, let's talk about the colony themselves. I've owned this colony for approximately 2 months now, and in just 1 month, they grew from this, into this. These ants are one of my favourite small species due to the way they look, as well as their timid nature. These ants will take shelter inside the formicarium upon me blowing at the outwork. This makes it very easy for me to clean their outwork without any ants swarming out. Moving on to the east of the Iridomimax colony, we have a Campanotus irritans pallidus colony or maybe Campanotus maculatus subnudos. Well, actually, technically both. Just like my Rido Mermaid's colony, this species is misidentified. What's worse is that on scientific records, both names are technically still correct. 
but for simplicity's sake, I'll address them as Cameron Otter's Britain's Pelidus. Because it's widely accepted and it's more accurate and it's also easier to pronounce. About this colony, I got them a few months back from a guy in the Ankeeping community and they're living in a formicarium that my friend gave me. Currently, I don't have much to talk about this species other than that they are one of the most beautiful Carpanotta species native to Singapore. On the left, we have a temporary addition to the end corner, a Campanotus oriventris colony inside an original Tar Heel and Formicarium. This colony was given to me by a friend who complained that the colony was not doing very well. Since the new additions to the end corner, I don't have much to talk about them. The same friend also gave me this Campanotus albasposus colony. I kept this colony together with my founding colonies inside a box underneath my Campanotus oriventris table. This is to keep the colony in a dark place as the poor design of the formicarium makes it impossible to block off light. Currently, I don't have too many founding colonies. I only have one Campanotus albasposus queen and two Northern Dara Fulva queens. On the topic of Campanotus albasposus, I actually have a colony living inside a setup with some test tubes inside. Campanotus albasposus are an interesting species of ants that have a pair of fake eyes on their gaster that they use to scare away predators. Moving up the shelf, I have my Odontopanera denticulata colony. This time, I unfortunately have some sad news. I decided to lend this colony to a friend for a period of time, and unfortunately, it came back in horrible conditions. I won't go in depth because I don't want them to feel bad, but on the bright side, they are currently recovering. They may not be at the number that they were once were before, but they are certainly surviving. So, for the backstory of this colony, they were given to me by a friend who was leaving the endkeeping hobby just over a year ago inside an original Ants Canada Omni Nest. In my previous videos, many people claimed that acrylic was a poor material for this species as it had slippery feet and could not grip onto it well. I actually disagree with this statement because the actual reason why they had trouble climbing on the acrylic in the previous video was because I cleaned the acrylic really really well before recording. Under normal circumstances, there will be a thin layer of dirt on the acrylic which is invisible to the naked eye. The ants use this dirt as a grip and can work on it as usual. But do take note, if you plan on keeping this species in acrylic to provide substrate for them to spin their cocoons. Moving away from the shelf, we have another end table. Let's talk about this colony first. To normal viewers, this might look like a normal black ant, but it's actually the rarest species I have in my collection. This is the Crematogaster species, which I believe is Crematogaster and Trustina. This ID is not 100% confirmed, but I'm quite sure that it is correct. There are not many people in Singapore who own this species, and I also can't really find much information about them online. Just a few observations I've made, these ants made a wall of what I believe to be larval silk, likes to dump rubbish all around the formula carom instead of a fixed spot, and prefers a dry tube over any wet ones I gave them. This makes me believe that they are dry loving arboreal species like most Gerontogaster ants. Now, neighboring them is a giant vivarium setup housing the species Campanotus irritans. This colony went through several problematic setups like this poorly designed DIY plaster formicarium. I am glad that they are now living in one of my favorite end setups that I technically did not even make. My friends came together to film this video of me making the vivarium, but they ended up doing 90% of the work while I just did the recording. It's definitely the best video I've ever made so far and I'm really proud of it. And that is all the end colonies I currently have. Once again, I would like to sincerely thank everyone watching this video for supporting my channel. I genuinely had a really fun time making all of these videos and watching myself improve video after video. I actually have quite a few big plans for my YouTube channel as well as my other social media accounts. However, I am unable to do all these projects on my own. Therefore, I created this Discord server so that I can interact with my viewers as well as get feedback from you guys. Anyways, that's the end of the video, and I'll see you next time, and next year. Happy New Year, and goodbye!